You are ambitious. You have big ideas. And big ideas usually need data. Maybe you've been browsing the web and you found some APIs that catch your interest. You want to do something with these APIs, right? Typically, the first step is to collect data from these APIs. And depending on the API, you may have to jump through some certain hoops and write custom code to download it. And it can just be frustrating. You just want to get up and started quickly. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take any API and instantly start harvesting data from it in CSV format using the Steve C data platform. Full disclosure, this is a paid platform that I own. This video is intended for current users of the platform as a tutorial or if you're considering seeing what this technology has to offer. We're going to use the free and public API from gpotter for this example. You can take the techniques in this video and apply them for any API in the web that returns JSON format, which almost every API in existence returns JSON format these days. They have a directory here of a bunch of different podcasts you can browse through, like technology, news and politics, yada yada. And if you scroll at the bottom, they offer an API we see that they offer a public API for their web services. And we can look at the directory API here, and we can see that they let anyone without authentication retrieve public data from their website. I wish more websites did this to make data more open and public. So let's say we want to just start and get the most popular podcasts from this directory. Scroll down, we can get things about individual podcasts, individual episodes. Here we go, podcast top list. They give the URL and then you put in the number of podcasts you want to get in .json. So for example, get slash top list slash 50.json. So you put this in a URL in a new tab, you will see you get a JSON response back of the top 50 podcasts. What if you want the top 150? You just add a one here and you'll get 150 back. So this JSON that most APIs will give you back is great if you want to write some custom code, but what if you just want to look at it in a CSV what if you want to load this into your own database? Or what if you want to visualize this using pandas? You would have to sit here and write a program made just for this specific JSON format and go through all the messy nesting and figure out how it should look as a CSV. So here's where the Steve C data platform comes in. It can take any arbitrary JSON format like this and automatically convert it into a set of hierarchical collections and flatten everything that needs to be flattened. Like sometimes you'll see weird JSON formats, arrays of dictionaries of one elements each. It'll flatten all that up and make it actually usable for you. So head on over to the Steve C data platform. I'll link to this below and you'll find a collection of data collection apps. These are all user contributed, meaning people went in and they defined them using the website. Point and click, no coding required. Now if I look around, I don't see anything for my website, gpotter.net. But no fear, I can add any website that I want using this button here. I can even feature my own app if I want to get featured. So here I'm going to create my new app. I'm going to name it gpotter. And I'm going to give the app's primary domain name here, which is gpotter.net. I'm going to pick a slug for it, gpotter. And check this button because this is an official API that we're dealing with. This is not some unofficial thing that we're scraping. And here I'm just going to write API wrapper to get public podcast data. And then here I'm going to link to their website. Actually, I'll link to their API website so other people browsing the site can find it. Uh, we have app icons. If this is your own app, you can feature your own logo if you want but we're not going to do that. And let's pick a category for this. Uh, let's do entertainment for now. Okay, so now I just created the gpotter app. This is private only to me. So if you only want to make apps visible to yourself, you can do that here. Uh, however, we encourage a community of sharing. So at the end of this, I'm going to show you how to publish this so other users can reuse this app. Now let's make our first data collection URL, which is we're going to tell Steve C the endpoints to hit and where to aggregate the data from. So we're going to give it this URL and we're going to train it to go and aggregate the data from here. So new URL, call it top podcasts, give it a slug here for its URL. And this is a get, use SSL, and here's the raw URL that we want to tell Steve C to hit. So we just need to give it the host name here, gpotter.net, port 443, and the path. What do we want to get? So here's the rest of it, the path. And let's just do 50 for uh, the sake of starting. Okay, now we have our URL created and let's execute it real quick, see how it does. Okay, so here's Steve C, it went and fetched and it got the raw JSON here. 
So Steve C formats it, but it goes a step further and actually converts it into collections so that we can download in CSV format. So here are all the podcasts here. We can see URLs, titles, logos, and they're nice in rows by columns. So we get 50 back. We could load this into a database if we want. We can also use the advanced uh, workflows feature in Steve C and uh, combine multiple pages of these together, uh, swap inputs to advanced things like that. Now, what if you do want to get the top 150 instead of 50? Well, I could go and edit this each time and replace this 50 in the URL with 150, or I could even clone this and make another task, one for each limit, but that's kind of pretty stupid, right? In Steve C, you can create variables for each endpoint. It uses the standard Jinja templating tags, so I can create a limit parameter and then inject it here in the URL. All I have to do is edit this, go back down to path, and instead of this 50, I'm going to use the Jinja variable tag, and I'm just going to call it limit. Edit endpoint, and then I'm going to create an input for it. I'm going to call this pagination limit. Variable name needs to match the name I chose in my Jinja template. So if you saw I had bracket bracket limit, I just need to name this limit. Sample value will do 50. We'll make it required and also say that the sample is the default. So if someone goes and uses this and doesn't override it, it's going to put in 50 as a default. But if they want to change it to 150, they can just make it 150. So I'm back. I see the same URL with a 50 here. But if I look at my inputs, I'm now presented with a new field I can override. So let's try 100. I typed in 100, and Steve Z automatically updated this to 100.json. Now I can run this, and the collections framework gives me a CSV with 100 back. So now I'm back to my same CSV format, and I scroll down, and I have 100 rows. This is awesome. So awesome, I want to share it with everyone else on the Steve Z platform. So just hit publish here. I'm going to publish the actual endpoint first, and then I'm going to go back to my app and publish it here. Now when I go back to that apps URL that I linked to below, you'll see that GD Potter is suddenly here. And my name's here under contributors. And I can browse this, and this is now available to the public so they can go and use this for themselves on the Steve C data platform. If you own an API or trying to attract more users, you may want to list your platform here to get more users and give them a very easy tool to use. So this was a drop-dead simple example of turning an API into a CSV on the data platform very quickly. There are a lot more advanced things that we can do here. Let me know in the comments what other APIs you've been dying to use but haven't gotten around to figuring out, and I'll make some videos or add them to the platform here for you. Be sure to like this if you learned something, and be sure to subscribe to Steve C Data so you don't miss my follow-up videos on how to turn APIs into raw data that you can use for insights in your own projects. Thank you so much for watching, and stay data-driven.